erasing Islamic faith, Muslim cleric flees Saudi Arabia for safety. A prominent Saudi Arabian religious scholar, Imad al uh, Mubayad, who criticized the country's rulers for implementing social reforms, reportedly fled the country after disappearing for days. Al-Mubayyad had condemned recent social changes in the country, including lifting the ban on music concerts, claiming that they were erasing the Islamic faith. After he uploaded a video criticizing the government, another video was released showing Al-Mubayyad reading a paper in front of him, seemingly rescinding his criticisms. This fueled speculation that he was forced to do so while in custody. However, a Twitter account linked to him later reported that the cleric left Saudi Arabia and arrived in the United Kingdom. While Saudi Arabia has implemented modernizing social reforms in recent years, political changes have not followed suit, and human rights organizations continue to criticize the kingdom for its crackdown on political dissidents and activists. So this is very interesting because now we have a situation in Saudi Arabia where there are people who have to leave because they're too conservative too, versus too Islamic. we're used to people having to leave because they're too liberal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how the tables have turned. <laughs> so Armin, what do you make of this? <laughs> <laughs> that Muslims are fleeing Saudi Arabia. It's not Islamic enough for them anymore. Yo, what do you even? It's kind of it's oh a little God. bit mind-boggling. Yeah, this guy is too Muslim for Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Yo, that's so crazy. <laughs> oh God, this is great. This is amazing. Uh, okay, okay. Well, I don't know. This is a bizarre. Um, you know, welcome to the land of Kufr, where you actually have freedom. Where you actually have the freedom to be a Muslim the way you want, <laughs> with expressing so your Islamic. Yeah, you have the in the land of Kufr, you actually can express your Islamic opinions, <laughs> but in Islamic countries, you can't. <laughs> oh my God, this is amazing! I can't believe this is the world we're living in right now. Unbelievable. Yeah, so like obviously, so he was criticizing like the music concerts that happen in um, Saudi Arabia now, like mixing sexes, like the all the stuff that's being done to attract Western and foreign tourism by diminishing the role of Islam in public life and all this stuff. What do you think? First of all, do you think he has a point? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, well, not erasing, but. It's like it's not binary, but it's becoming Saudi Arabia is becoming less Islamic. Mm -hmm. It is becoming mm -hmm. less Islamic. So that he he's right about that. Um, which is actually funny. I was watching Omid Dana, in, uh, it's a it's a Persian show, right? And <laughs> by the way, I don't like the guy. He like just no. people think it. Yeah, it's just funny. Uh, but he was telling. The religious people, there's a lot of, like the religious people in Iran who used who are trying to enforce Islamic laws, like the civilians that we just watched, right? People say like, if you like Islam so much, Iran is not the right country for you. Go to Saudi Arabia. That's what people used to tell. Them. Like, why are you here? Go to Saudi Arabia. This is not your country, right? Yeah. But now, I mean, Dana was making the fun of like, apparently we can't tell you to go to Saudi Arabia anymore. They will kick you out. Like, there's no more place. <laughs> we used to tell you to go to Saudi Arabia, but now we don't have a place to go. Where, where are you going to go? Go to UK. Afghanistan. No, you no, no. Actually, to be honest, the UK is a better place for Muslim conservatives than any Islamic country right now. This Honestly, is why... that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. They have a lot of. I mean, U.S. and Canada don't have their fair share of don't don't have a, a huge population of very conservative Muslims, right? So, I mean, I, we have people like Daniel Hayraju, but we the the more Muslim Muslims in Canada and U.S. are more on the liberal side than on the conservative side. Mm -hmm. So, if you want a huge population of really really conservative Muslims. UK is, and you speak English. UK is a place to go. UK yeah, is yeah, your yeah. country. Yeah, yeah. So well, this is interesting. 
do you think okay because obviously like throughout the previous several decades we saw saudi arabia export a lot of their conservatism around the world through different madrasas and stuff like that and the impact of that was no bueno um but now we see the country attempting to like fake modernize modernize just in the facade the exterior right put a little shiny coat of paint on it and we're (laughs) <laughs> then seeing people leave because they're too conservative. So do you think we will see another wave of Saudi conservatism in the idea is now being exported around the world as perhaps more conservative clerics leave because they don't like the reforms, quote unquote reforms. So, so let's be clear. There is still conservative ideas being exported out of Saudi Arabia with the backing of government, okay? But it's a new brand. It's conservative, but it's non-political, right? So most people don't know, most people understand Salafis as, you know, I don't know, Al-Qaeda and ISIS, but they don't understand that most Salafis are not like that. Most Salafis are, don't, are not don't think it's not right to be involved in politics at all, let alone jihad, you know, and jihad and stuff like that. Most right? of them aren't and this is Yeah. Um most of them think that you shouldn't even they as they think that you're part of the Khawarij if you even criti- if you say something against the Islamic um ruler. So uh, an Islamic ruler as flawed as he is you have to accept them because mm-hmm. stability of the Islamic land is more important than a, than having an emir that is properly Islamic. Mm. You know I mean? So they associate people who question the rulers, the Islamic rulers, as a sect in Islam um, that used to, that were called the Khawarij, which were, yeah, uh, which is really dirty, like a really disgusting accusation yeah, 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 to yeah, make yeah. Someone, someone else. Because well, they were so extreme. So, for example, yeah. So, think about the on YouTube, for example, is, you can see that war happening between Daniel Hayreju types of um, YouTubers, which are for being criticizing the Saudi regime, and you see Sajid Libham. On the other side, being uh, the the kind of people that say like, no, um, this is dangerous behavior. This is what leads to terrorism. This is what leads to instability. This is what leads to Muslim suffering. And that what Sajid Lepam is saying is exactly the type of scholar, Islamic scholars that now the Sa- Saudi Arabia is funding, right? So because they want, yeah, because they want Muslim conservatives to go out and say like. These guys don't be political, right? Because that is within their interest. So that's why a lot of people accuse Sajid Lepham of being paid by the Saudis. Well, that was my immediate eye raise. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> eyeball emoji, eyeball emoji. <laughs> yeah, looking. Blue. I'm looking. <laughs> right. um, yeah, that's really interesting. Okay. Hmm. So, hmm. <laughs> so, how is that Muslim ruler supposed to be established? You're just going with whoever is currently the monarchy? Oh. Just whoever's no, 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 the no, royal you, family? You, you, well, you, oh, or are we so going you, with the oh. traditional way a caliph is selected? Oh, my sweet, sweet summer child. You think, <laughs> you, you think it's up to the people? Oh, that's so cute. No, I don't that think it's so up adorable. to the people. It has to be up no. to someone, though. No, some group selects some... it. No, that's humans. You're talking about humans. It's not up to humans. Okay, whoever is the emir, God has decided. You but have who to. Who decides have... the first emir? Whatever happens, God has deemed it so. Okay, I see now. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> so don't question. Don't. Question God's hekma, his wisdom. That's so okay? weird. That's like borderline, like God King 
theocracy. Well, yeah, this exactly. is like what Catholics would do. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, this I mean, whatever happens, like, it could be by force, it could be through elections. I don't, like, this is just like a play. God God works in mysterious ways on, mm -hmm. on all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, this is going to be fascinating, by the way, going forward to see what's going to happen. Um, but, right, oh, by the way, right, for people who understand, this is not because the Saudis are like, oh, we don't like Islam or anything like that, right? The Saud... Uh, you know, the House of Wahhab is the house that cares about Islam more than anything else. The House of Saud cares about money. So this is the competition between the House of Wahhab and House of Saud. They married together. They tried to go through a divorce. It was bloody. So the House of Saud cowered in in 1979. And they're like, okay, let's stay married. And now they're reattempting that divorce one more time. And this time they're really, they're really, you know, adamant about going through with this divorce, right? Because they're going to run out of oil. I mean, they're not going to run out of oil, but they're going to run out of oil revenue at some point. Um, so given that they, they can see the writing on the wall, they're like, we need to make this divorce happen because we need investments. We need money. We need tourism. And we need to diversify. And this Islam, Islam is just not a good luck. You know, this is actually what they're thinking. Mohammed bin Salman, uh, I think he's literally thinking Islam is not a good luck. Islam is not a good luck. He doesn't like it. Okay. He wants people to, when they think Saudi Arabia, to think beautiful deserts, high technology, amazing cities, luxury, you know, luxury. Okay. Um, he doesn't want to, to think about Kaaba. He doesn't want you to think about, you know, the Hajj or the Quran or anything like that. He doesn't like, or he's like, a, he's like a new Reza Shah or, uh, killing people for apostasy and homosexuality. Yeah. Corporal yeah, yeah, punishment, yeah. choppy, yeah. choppy square. No, 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 no. Killing is no, no. He wants you to think about killing. You know, he especially internally. He wants he, he wants you not, like we kill people still, but because you are challenging my power, not because you're anti-Islamic or something. That's that's the direction that you want to go. Like like okay, so Sharia, I will I will become even more fascistic than what Islam is. Like you can also we're not endorsing this guy. This guy was going full on fascist, right? But he wants to, he wants to he wants to kill you because you questioned him, not because you questioned Allah, right? This guy is like actually competing with Allah. He's building a Kaaba uh, bigger than Kaaba. Like he's literally. Competing with Allah. The macabre. <laughs> the macabre. Yeah, you guys have seen the news, right? So, Kaaba for the modern age. The macabre. <laughs> another, another, so, okay, so first of all, the comparisons to Iran are amazing, right? Because this is reminds me of, like I told you, when Reza Shah tried to, in Iran, tried to ban the, the picture of a camel because he felt like that is too, looks too backwards. Now, this guy is going that, but times a million, right? Um, but another comparison to which I will to Muhammad bin Salman, or which people are making, is Mushtaba Khamenei, right? And people are wondering if Mushtaba Khamenei would be a Muhammad bin Salman, which we could talk about later if one day if you want to, but that would be too much detail right now. Oh my gosh, yeah, I want to talk to you about that behind the scenes. We yeah, do a lot of good analysis off air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but, oh, by the way, what happened to Reza Shah might happen. A lot of people are predicting that maybe, maybe poking Islamists is eventually going to backfire. So people are wondering maybe what happened to the Pahlavi dynasty is eventually going to happen to the House of Saud. And Islamists will take over Saudi Arabia. That's what I'm concerned about. That's why I'm asking mm -hmm. these questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, my Lord. Okay. What is this next? Okay, let's go. Let's move on because people, I don't think oh, okay. they know what we're talking about. <laughs> we're um, being nerdy. <laughs> yeah, we're being nerdy with our politics, guys. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese god, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.